Hey everyone, welcome to what is probably going to be a very long episode from Ampro Engineering. In this episode, we are going to begin the process of completing my Tamiya Sand Scorcher chassis and interior set build. I've got a lot of parts to show with this project here. And before I even begin, I guess I should mention that all of the part numbers and links to the Shapeways page as well as my mini factory will be in the description. Because of the volume of the parts, I will not post the part numbers on the screen because things will get a little bit crazy. But again, everything will be in the video description. What we have here is the main chassis. So that flexible piece of fiberglass goes in the bin. This is the cage. And this cage now mounts to the front shock tower and the rear cage. And this will create a very rigid structure. This embossed area here will be for the battery. Any beetle aficionado knows that this is not how a beetle floor pan looks. But in this case here, the battery is accessible externally. This will be designed for a small 2S LiPo battery. This is not designed for a NICAD or anything close to what the Sand Scorcher originally had. I did give some details here to match the actual floor pan of the Beetle, but given the Sand Scorcher's geometry, I wasn't able to carry this straight through. And when we attach it to the chassis, you will see why. There's a little retainer here, which holds the back of the cage to the vehicle's cage and that is where they are. So they are just attached to this main cage. You just cut that off and uh, we'll install it. Moving on to some of the detailed parts. These are detailed parts that will complete the cosmetics of the interior. This part here is the firewall. So you've got our clutch brake and very 1970s foot shaped gas pedal. Here we have our dashboard complete with the steering wheel that slots into the steering column. This is a really special little piece. This is all the detail for the dash. So we have the panels that go on the left and the right of the cluster. Here is our trim ring for the cluster, glove box door. And instead of a radio, since this is kind of a Baja bug, these are going to be three gauges. Here at the bottom, we have a ignition key with peace sign on key ring. And this is how it comes from Shapeways. If you have an FDM printer, I'm sorry, but this is probably not going to work. And that's at the filming of this video. I'm sure that in the future, there will be a significant improvement in the quality of FDM. Perhaps a resin printer will get this detail done. To be honest, I, I can't be certain. This is PolyJet. So if you do want to print this interior yourself, may I make the suggestion that you can print the larger pieces, but the detail bits like this dash panel set and the additional detail piece here would be advantageous to get those from Shapeways. Here we have the instrument cluster. There's the little, I think it's a fuel gauge on the real car, three sets of gauges, and that's just all one piece. You've got one, two, three, four holes for three millimeter LEDs to illuminate them if you so choose. We have window cranks, these are the little door handles. Here we have the little armrests. This is the center horn button for the wheel. This is the trim ring for the steering wheel. And this guy here, that is a very vintage Futaba radio. And that is the wheel for the Futaba radio. There is a rectangular hole in the back. And what this does is becomes your on and off switch. And we'll get there when we get there very shortly. This is the shifter. These pieces are pretty self-explanatory with the right and the left door panels. And we have the inserts. And the reason I've done this is because it is very simple to spray these one color and come in back and spray these another color. So if you want to have, just like that, if you want to have a two-tone interior, this is completely idiot-proof. You're not going to have to mask stuff. I hate doing that. And then, of course, you've got the rear piece and then the right side of the car. There's one last part, and it's this weird, weird-looking little guy. So there are two parts here. You have this upper panel, and you have this lower panel. That is our interior set. One thing I want to bring up early on here, if you have a sand scorcher and you would like to complete this installation, 
If you are familiar with the Sand Scorcher, you will note that there are some problems here. The Sand Scorcher servo is mounted round about here, and you've got a linkage that comes out and turns the bell crank on the body post. Well, that is no longer the case. Now the servo will screw in here and here, or if you've got a shorter servo, you can screw in there and there and just put a couple holes. You will no longer use the bell crank and the servo will um, steer directly off of the bell crank on the servo, directly to the tie rods and to the knuckles on the car. You'll notice that there are no seats. The reason is I found some generic seats on the internet. These were like $6. I'll try and put a link in the description. The problem with putting links to eBay is that the sellers change constantly. But what I'll have is some basic dimensions so that you can find something similar okay get your little seat mounts here on the bottom what you notice is that the cage has little hooks right here or i should say loops on the cage if you want to install a five-point harness before i begin the installation process or i should say the assembly process i will have to paint everything now the thing is if you use shapeways this nylon material doesn't paint particularly well if you want a shiny surface so if you want it shiny you're going to have to give it five or six coats of a sandable primer and then sand this very carefully. The nylon does not sand well at all. If you're gonna use an FDM, you've got ABS. I, there's a lot of different agents you can put on it to uh, melt the ABS a bit and give it a smoother finish. So just note that the finishing process here will be dependent on the material that you choose. The polyjet, which is quite similar to the resin print, is very, very easily sanded. So if you wanna get a nice smooth finish on this, it should be pretty easy to do. If you're on Shapeways, do clean all of these polyjet parts because the process that they use to clean them can leave a bit of residue. In fact, as I'm touching them, it's a little bit slippery. This is just the wax support material, but if you try and paint it, it's just not going to bond well. So scrub it down with some soap and water, let it dry thoroughly, and you'll be all set. We'll scrub this guy a little bit as well. Do not scrub that key. Just rinse it a little bit and just don't touch it. We have some components painted already. We'll start with the doors. You can see here that the holes on the back will line up with the holes on the insert. You can glue those straight in there. And the rear panel will do the same thing. It'll just sit right there and that'll just line up smooth with this. Prior to installing everything, I do want to go ahead and paint the trim here on the door handles as well as the door panels. I've got a chrome pen here and just run it directly along the embossed surface here. And this should do the trick. Same on the door handle. So it might be a little bit more challenging because you've got to hold it. This is one of the dash inserts. Same thing will happen here. The other side of the speedometer, there is a little point right here. Glove box here has been done as well. Use a few drops of super glue. Don't go too crazy with it because you don't want it to bloom and make a mess of everything. We'll put a little bit of weight on it. Not much. We just don't want it to lift up as it's securing. Please recall that you have to select the door panel that corresponds to this. Otherwise, you will install the door panel in the wrong orientation like this. Or worse yet, you'll have it upside down. So please make note of that. All right, so the door handle installation is pretty straightforward. You can see here at the rear, there's a thin part and a thick part. The thin part was what was attached to the sprue. And the thick part is what actually lines up. So we'll just take our flush cutters and very carefully you want to cut off the thinner part. Don't go too high up. Let's just go ahead and put all that in. Flip it over and I'll put just a little dab of CA glue. Just a little tiny bit is all we're going to need. Next we'll put in the door handle. Same with this. We'll just snip off the thinner piece. Now I've painted these with a chrome paint pen, same as before. We'll just drop that in. Most of the images that I've seen have shown this handle in the down position like that. And then the window crank works the exact same way. These I like to usually make a little bit different left and right. We'll put that up like that. A little dab of CA glue and you're done. I want to put the dash together, but before I do that, I have to remove the little gauge cluster here. This is going to be a little tricky. Just got to grab, see that little shaft right there. You don't want to cut the ring, you want to cut the stand off and just snip it at the base and that all right there it is just take your time cage cluster trim ring now on the actual car that would be a radio but this is a baja bug this is going to be the fun part now i did want to mention that on the dash you can see these striations here from the nylon print 
I did several coats of the blue, a little bit of sanding, a few more coats, a little bit of sanding, and eventually you'll get it to look like this. You can kind of see it if you get the light right, but for the most part, it doesn't look like uh, any of the lines are there. Here, I don't care because these things get dropped in. For this, we're gonna use a model glue. I've got this Testures Cement. Don't ask me where it's from. It's gotta be 30 years old. Okay, so let's put a little bit in these areas here. That's gonna be more than enough, I think. Because remember, this is gonna press down and you don't want it to squirt out the sides because that would be a disaster. This should be a snug fit. Yeah, just like that, cool. Next, we'll put this little panel in here. So the perimeter is in chrome and the inside is in silver. Not that it looks much different there. What I also wanted to do, I actually forgot, was to paint the inside of this black so that when you look through the little grills here, they look black. So I'll just use a Sharpie and touch that up. As before, we'll use some model cement. Just a little bit in the corners, I think that'll be fine. Okay. The trim ring for the speedometer can go in in any orientation, so we'll trim the back. Put just a little bit of adhesive just around the perimeter here. And this will just drop in our last piece are the gauges. So I'll just put that in there. And there is no up or down with these, they just drop straight in. Nice. For the instrument cluster, we'll paint these white and then black. The inside here should be painted silver, so I did that as well. And then we'll light this up using four three millimeter LEDs. To sand it, you can see in profile that you can't just put it down on a flat surface because it'll cock over to one side. What you're gonna wanna do is put the sandpaper on a raised surface so that the edge doesn't hit these, but does sand this down and then very carefully sand those down. I'm using 1500 grit sandpaper. And we'll wrap this around like that, set that flat side down, and then sand just like that. Okay, you can see where the paint is coming off. So take your time here, you don't have to push very hard. Just go back and forth a little bit and eventually it'll all come off the way it should. For the other side, we can flip this around, very carefully drag that back and forth. Middle one needs a bit more. Now we're ready for installation. So flip it around and this will just drop in here. Put a little bit of adhesive like that. It's all good to go. To install the keys and the knobs, we'll have to cut them off just at the base down here and hang on to them as you cut them because they will shoot off into oblivion. So these are the two knobs. I forget what this smaller guy is. And then lastly, the ignition key with the little key sign key fob. It's hard to tell, but the actual key is a Volkswagen emblem. Quickly, before you lose everything, get your tweezers out. These have a larger base and will slot ideally right in here. Why does it look like it won't fit? It actually is going in. Evidently 300 layers of paint was not a good idea for this hole. So we'll just put the X-Acto knife in there and clean it out a tad. Never force any polyjet prints, which is what the ultra detail plastic is because it is not particularly suited to a lot of forces. I went ahead and cleared out the ashtray and ignition key holes as well. And now they should go in. Perfect, that goes in. And that one, the ashtray pull. And most terrifyingly, the ignition key. There you go a bit of model glue and we're done. We will assemble the steering wheel. So here is our wheel. Here's the horn ring and the button for the center of the steering wheel. We will snip this off, snip that off. Ideally this fits. I've never tried it before, but let's give her a go, shall we? Yes. Oh, wait. Oh, it's upside down. So there's a little slot right there, if you can see that. Put a dab of glue right in the center. Maybe even a little, now we'll use model glue for that. So it's a little bit there in the center. Nice, that's it. That's what I was looking for. A little bit of glue here, and then we'll drop in the center of the wheel. And this is keyed, you can see it in the back. There is the wheel, it looks crooked, doesn't it? Now, I can't remember 
how easily this is going to fit. Oh, it just goes right in. Uh, it is a bit of a loose fit, and it's because I want to give the anybody installing this the option of making it operational, which I'm not going to do here because I can't be bothered. That's the wheel and the, the dash. That's pretty cool. Let's put this aside and take a look at our chassis. Now, I've gone ahead and painted this the same color blue as the main dash. The bottom side is low gloss black. I've done that as well with the battery door. Why did I design something that requires fingernails if I don't have fingernails? Oh my God, there it goes. Well played, I need a tool. Seriously, I have no fingernails and I designed something that requires fingernails. All right, and the battery door. Painted the shift boot black, painted these little supports with the seat in silver. Here is the firewall. The little foot and the brake and the clutch are painted. That'll go there. But in order to assemble any of this, we need the main superstructure right here. You'll have to clean out all of these holes with a 2.5 millimeter drill bit. Snip these off. Don't lose them because this secures the rear cage to the factory cage on the sand scorcher. These you don't need to drill, but these here will be 2.5 millimeter. So the main cage is attached to the chassis with four 12 millimeter long M3 self-tapping screws. The complete bill of material for the hardware used and necessary for this build is, of course, in the description. One here at the rear, and then two more. One there, one there. Next, the firewall will go in. How does it go? Who designed this? Pretty sure it goes like that. Yes, that is definitely probably how it goes. Here at the bottom, use a short M3 self-tapping screw. You can use an 8mm, but to be honest, it can even be shorter than that if you have it. My plan is to put the driver and passenger's foot down here anyway, so you won't see these. Next, we'll install the dash. This side here, please clear out with a 25 millimeter drill bit, and this side should be fine because it is very shallow. With that said, you do not want to extend the screw too far in here, so if you have a screw that's too long, you could inadvertently screw into the back of the cluster. Both sides will take a self-tapping screw, three millimeters in diameter and 12 millimeters long. Line all that up. Okay, just little stops. Just like you folks watching, this is my first time seeing the dash in the car. Man, the cage looks like green gold on camera. It is not, it's bronze. Drop in the steering wheel. I'm not gluing it because I have to put the seat in still. And the reason why the seat's not in is because I just don't know if I'm gonna need more space later. So let's drop the seat in here. Sweet. And what I should have put in, earlier and forgot is the shift knob. So here's the shift knob. We bit a model cement here along the base. Don't forget the color of the shift pattern on the ball. All right, that's in there. 